Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us in this comprehensive briefing on the recent developments in the ongoing conflict between the Ethiopian National Defense Forces, ENDF, and Amhara Fano forces within the Amhara region. We have gathered information from various sources, and in this video, we aim to provide you with the latest updates on the intense fighting in different areas. Beginning with the reports from Angareb and Seme Kifu near Gonda City, we have learned that intense clashes have taken place between Fano forces and a coalition consisting of ENDF, Amhara militia, and Amhara riot police. The situation remains tense in this strategic location, and the details of the engagements are still emerging. Moving to Atat near Kibero Meda, Azezo, situated in Gonda, reports indicate that ENDF soldiers stationed at checkpoints were ambushed. This signifies a challenging and unpredictable environment in the region, with both sides resorting to strategic maneuvers to gain the upper hand. In Teda, Gonda City, Fano forces reportedly ambushed a police station, resulting in significant losses, including the tragic deaths of three Amhara riot police officers. This underscores the severity of the confrontations and the toll it is taking on local law enforcement. Now, turning our attention to Maxinit, Gonda Zuria, situated in Gonda, we have received distressing information that Fano forces ambushed an ENDF camp, leading to the unfortunate loss of 15 Amhara militias and one Amhara Fano member. These incidents highlight the high human cost associated with the ongoing hostilities in the region. In Gadebi, Vogera County, also situated in Gonda, a three-hour-long intense fighting occurred between Fano forces, Amhara militias, and Amhara riot police. In a significant development, Fano forces managed to successfully free 25 imprisoned Fano members during the confrontations. This showcases the complexity of the conflict and the various objectives pursued by the involved parties. In Aimba, near Metema, situated in Gonda, reports indicate that intense fighting has erupted, leading to the unfortunate loss of 10 Amhara militias. The severity of the clashes underscores the volatile nature of the conflict in this particular region. Moving on to Chandiba near Chilga, situated in Gonda, we have received reports that Fano forces initiated an attack on an NDF camp. However, the extent of casualties resulting from this engagement remains unknown at this time. This uncertainty adds to the complexity and challenges in assessing the overall impact of the conflict. In Lue, Este and Macero, Amachejo, also situated in Gonda, intense fighting occurred recently. The specific details surrounding these incidents are currently being investigated, emphasizing the need for comprehensive and accurate information to fully grasp the dynamics of the ongoing confrontations. Shifting our focus to Mota, situated in eastern Gojam on Saturday, intense fighting took place, resulting in the unfortunate death of seven Amhara militias and several Fano soldiers sustaining injuries. This indicates that the conflict is not confined to specific areas and continues to have widespread ramifications. In a significant development at Gonda Airport, it has been reported that Prime Minister Abi Ahmed has ordered the deployment of additional ENDF soldiers via planes and helicopters. Witnesses on the ground have reported observing 12 Antonov planes filled with soldiers landing in Gonda. This move suggests a strategic escalation in response to the evolving dynamics of the conflict in the region. Local news sources confirm that fighting erupted in Gonda City primarily on Saturday, affecting Azezo and Kebele, 18 localities within the city. Unfortunately, complete calm has yet to be restored, and the clashes have had significant repercussions on the lives of the residents. The timing of the conflict, coinciding with the Ethiopian Christmas celebration, has added to the challenges faced by the local population. 
disruptions in business activities, transportation restrictions, and the imposition of difficult circumstances on residents in affected areas have characterized the holiday season. Reports indicate that government forces utilized artillery and heavy weaponry in Gondar, resulting in the tragic death of up to 14 people, including civilians. The historical significance of Gondar as a prominent tourist destination in the region adds gravity to the situation. Allegedly, officials from the ruling Prosperity Party fled the city, seeking refuge in military camps belonging to the defense force stationed in the area, according to local sources. Ongoing reports suggest that FANO forces continue to engage the defense force in parts of the city not previously mentioned. As of now, neither the Ethiopian government nor the Amhara regional state has released an official statement to clarify the security situation in the city and confirm or deny the reported casualties. Despite earlier claims by the Ethiopian Defense Force and the government regarding the restoration of normalcy in the Amhara region, multiple reports from local sources confirm active engagements between FANO forces and the Ethiopian Defense Force in various parts of the region. Last week, FANO forces entered Debre Berhan town, just 120 kilometers north of the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa. The occupation led to a joint operation involving the Defense Force, anti-riot police, and local militia forces, resulting in hours of intense fighting before the FANO forces withdrew from the city. Government structures across different parts of the region either lack functionality or are unable to provide public services due to security concerns, further complicating the situation. The Amhara regional state recently extended an ultimatum to FANO forces to surrender, claiming that over 5,000 FANO fighters have surrendered. However, FANO forces categorically reject this assertion as entirely false. The administration's ultimatum to FANO forces, issued twice and recently extended, underscores the complexities of the conflict and the challenges faced by the authorities in restoring order. As the situation continues to evolve, we will strive to keep you informed with the latest developments. Stay tuned for further updates on this unfolding crisis in the Amhara region.